I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE, NXT, and Pro Wrestling majestic again. Overall, a solid NXT. Was it as good as last week? No. Was I going to expect it to be as good? No. But was there some good stuff here? Yeah, absolutely. Now, one part that I thought was kind of, I don't know, a low, was the Bada Boom Bada Bing Battle Royal. Essentially a tag team battle royal up until the final two teams where then it was a traditional tag team match pin submissions. That's very TNA and I am not a fan of it. Also because the Italian mobsters are Italian mobsters, they were on their little platform eating, I am not kidding you, spaghetti and wine. My dude, I dated an Italian woman from legitimate Italy for six months. That bitch ate everything, including my non-Italian sausage. They don't eat just spaghetti and drink wine. Like, that stereotype is so corny. I get it, it's a stereotype, but Jesus effing H. They eat not pasta and drink non- alcoholic grape juice. Seriously. Could they have just had like water and bread or something? Was that hard? That's the only thing that I really got out of it because they were sitting there just zooming in on these two bozos legitimately eating a towel. This is essentially Mario the TV show with some wrestling in the background. Anyway, the final two teams were Chase U and then Angel Garza, Humberto Carrillo. And then they actually had a fun match. Probably would have been better with the tournament, but that's just me. And it was a roll-up with the Creed Brothers to win. Also, JC Jane and Thea Hale were more so of actual cheerleaders with full pom-poms at ringside. Obviously, Thea Hale was more enthusiastic than JC Jane, but I like that dynamic. It's kind of interesting. Let's see where it goes. I'm going to be optimistic there, but Chase Year One, it was 100% the right call. Uh, just because of the jokes that I got out of it, and it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, I'm going to give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up, and this is being really goddamn nice. Up next was a segment with the three participants in our main event for the NXT Championship number one contenders, but then Trick Williams was added to the match. And Trick, super popular with the crowd, and Carmelo, actually not enthusiastic about it, where it looked like he was about to attack Trick. Now, this was a foreshadowing thing about Trick actually getting hurt in the back by a mystery person, but that shit was so crisp. God damn, this was done well. The promo was done well. The thing was done well. The reveal was done well. All of it was just done really well. I'm going to give this thing an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. It kind of seemed like a waste of time, but that's just me. So this was a NXT Women's Breakout Tournament with two women that I've never seen in the ring before in my entire existence. It was Carmen Petrovic, I butchered that immensely, versus Jada Parker. I did a lot better on that one. So Carmen was the, uh, the the white bitch, and then Jada was the black bitch. You got it? Good. I'm sorry. I mean, other than like their gear, which is once again, white on white, and then black on black, what else is there? <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I'm gonna be called racist, I swear to god. I mean, I, I was already called like fucking uh, fat phobic for what I said about goddamn uh, uh, Piper Niven last week. I mean, last, I mean, this week on Raw, I was actually very impressed with both of these women, actually. And that's not for damage control. I was actually impressed. It was a modified code of silence for Carmen to win. Uh, these two have good athleticism. There is some decent charisma from both of them. Uh, In-ring presence and maybe some promo are definitely going to be needed, but that can be taught. Orange Cassidy thumbs up. I'll be nice there. Tegan Knox and uh, Lyra Valkyria. So, fun fact, I think it was today, five years ago, where Tegan Knox actually basically destroyed her knee when she dislocated her kneecap, 
tore her ACL and MCL in essentially every single muscle in her knee and continued the damn match. Now, this match itself, was it out of this world good? No, absolutely not. But was it fine for what it was? Yeah, I enjoyed most of it. It was a uh, roundhouse kick for Lyra to win. There was a post-match promo by Lyra really gushing over Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch was over top saying, hey, you know what? These are two Irish girls going after the NXT Women's Champion. I really dug that. It actually gave a lot of a lot of context with this match that I'm super excited for. And it, it just worked for me. Orange Cassidy, thumbs up. Kiana James taking on Shotzi. I did not know Shotzi was there. Everything here with Shotzi was pretty good up until the damn hair. I never liked the spike look. I still don't. Everything else I'm totally cool with. Maybe the blue lipstick. That was enormously distracting. But other than that, I actually liked this match. Decent back and forth. They actually gave it a little bit of time. There was a little bit of, you know, uh, where uh, Roxanne Perez helped out where the loaded bag in with the brick inside was not a factor. And it was a top rope sent on for Shotzi to win. Nobody looked buried. Nobody looked bad. I'm cool with it. Orange Cassidy, thumbs up. Maybe a little more promo, maybe a little bit more rivalry along with this would have been a little bit better. And maybe Shotzi being announced before she got there if she's still on SmackDown, but it's fine for what it is. I also totally dig seeing Shotzi on there. I don't know, kind of a crush for me. Okay, so this one was a little bit special. So Alana Grace, or I'm sorry, Ariana Grace taking on Brinley... Grease? Sure, let's go with that. So Brinley was the replacement for uh, Kiana Jackson from Metaphor. I think that's who, I think that's the name. Yeah, the, the other girl, not Lash Legend. Also, by the way, Ariana Grace is the daughter of Santino Morella. And her charisma and her facial expressions 100% give that expression. She has a very subtle, fun, comedic approach, just like Santino. And I love it. It was a flip face buster, not a big fan of it, for the win and uh, Grace won. Okay. I kind of wish she did like a Cobra-esque finisher. I think that would have been awesome. But I thought that with her charisma here and people's reaction to her... I'm okay with it. And it gets an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. A lot of breakout women's matches in this show, and I am totally okay with it. I'm seeing a lot of what they're doing, what they're developing, and where they're going, and I am 100% for it. And our main event, a triple threat match, Carmelo Hayes, Baron Corbin, and Dijak. Winner is number one contender for the NXT champion at, I think, night two of Halloween Havoc. This was a good match. Even though Trick was supposed to be in this match, it was a good match. And they're really building this something different and something special. Give it time, people. Give the Trick and Carmelo split some time. You're gonna see it. So it was end of days on Dijak, but while Baron Corbin was getting up, Carmelo hit nothing but net but pin Dijak, which was great. Nobody looked bad here. Nobody looked weak here. It was just all well and good. And this gets a full goddamn thumbs up. And not just the match here, but the storyline with Trick. And now is NXT. Let me know you thought about my video, but also NXT in the comments down below or right over here next to me. Subscribe to the channel, become a patron, get hats, and also follow all of my social media. All of those links will be in the link tree in the bio or in the description, depending on watching this on. And as always, be majestic.